My name is Patsy McSherry and I'm going to take this opportunity to talk to you a little bit about compassion and particularly self-compassion in these uh, difficult times. Um, a little bit about what gets, the way, what gets in the way of, of being compassionate to ourselves and then a little uh, tool, a mindfulness tool in order to help us overcome suppose, the obstacles to our self-compassion. So I've got a little presentation um, if you bear with me, I'm going to uh, share with you. Okay. Okay, so um, self-compassion. In order to be self-compassionate, one has to have an understanding of what compassion is. So compassion, um, you know, in order to have compassion for others, you have to first of all notice that they're suffering, notice that they're struggling or mm, just not, uh, just not uh, in great form. And then out of that, then, particularly if it's somebody you're close to or, or that you, um, you know, that you, you have around in your life, you have a sense of warmth and care and certainly not harsh judgment. Um, and you relate to their, their humanity um, in a sense of, uh, well, that I've, I've, I've struggled before, I've been in bad form before, that could be, that could be me, uh, it might be me now, but it certainly could, has been me before, could be me in the future. So it's like there by the grace of God go I. So it's shared humanity, it's so important in terms of compassion to get a sense of actually, you know, we're all in this together. And, and certainly around this time, particularly, you know, everybody's, the idea of uh, everybody's housed up and everybody is, is reduced to social uh, connection with other people and all of that. And um, so in terms of compassion for others, you, you, you first notice that you, you feel warm, you, want, you have a desire to, to help and you can relate to them on a human uh, compassionate level and you also have a desire to help. So when it comes to um, self-compassion, those components are no different. So, you know, you have, first of all, you have to take the time. This is where maybe people, people get a bit stuck, actually taking the time to notice and allow yourself to feel the emotions that's causing you to suffer or to struggle or to be feel a bit fed up or, or just, you know, not, just a bit down or whatever. And allow it to be there. And that's really important. Sort of give, it, give that emotion permission to be there, be it anger, be it sadness, be it resentment, be it frustration, whatever that emotion is or whatever that those, you know, just allow it to be there and recognize it as part of shared humanity. Um, you know, um, a bit like if you have compassion for somebody else, so recognize the human, you know, the humanity within that. So recognize the humanity in your in your in yourself. This is the price to be I pay for being a human being. Struggling is all part of the package. Um, you know, and and you know what I would urge a good friend to do, or what I would what, how would I how would I what kind of feelings would I have towards a friend who was who was feeling like this? Um, and then you know give that give that type of friendship and compassion towards yourself. So, and you know, some people say, well, okay, well, actually it's really important that I look after everybody else's needs, be compassionate to everybody else. And then, you know, what works, it doesn't really matter about me. You know, everybody else wrote me. And that's, you know, that's, that's a bit of a, it's a misnomer really. It's not, it's not possible because it's like, you know, they talk about drawing artificial lines in the sand. We say, well, we're compassionate to other people who are not actually compassionate to myself. That really isn't true compassion, because in order to be truly compassionate to other people, you have to start with yourself and to actually experience and feel and feel that shared humanity. And we're all in this together. We're all part of this, this bigger um, universe of humanity. So remember to take the time to fill up your own cup and uh, and that adage, you can't pour from an empty cup. If your cup is empty, then you need to kind of pull back a little bit and show um, and look at your own needs for compassion and show some compassion to yourself. 
And then you're much more able to be genuinely and truly compassionate to others. And so some of the things that get in the way of self-compassion, and there's a number of things I have listed here, self-criticism and self-judgment, which is a huge one. Perfectionism, the need to be perfect and doing everything perfect, we need to be the good, be uh, perfect in what I do and perfect in, uh, as a parent or whatever it may be, whatever your flavor of perfectionism is, is and it comes in very in many different flavors. Um, and also coming from a place of not good enough or unworthiness. And again, part of that shared humanity. Um, people feel, oh, I'm the only one feeling like this. Absolutely not. There's so, so, at some, at some point in time, everybody comes from some element of not good enough or a sense of unworthiness. So, um, in particular, we're going to talk about the self-criticism, self-judgment in this in this talk around how that gets in the way of you exercise compassion for yourself. So we all have an inner critic. It's just part of being a human being. Again, it's the price we pay for our humanity. Uh, um, a critical inner voice that judges and berates us and with whom we're contending on a daily basis. So they don't go away. Typically judgmental and laced with negativity and scolding. Typical chatter for our inner critic is not good enough, you're not, you're not doing enough, you're not smart enough, who do you think you are, what's wrong with you, you're a failure. So very, very negative, kind of almost like a, a bullying kind of aspect of this inner critic. And, and the, 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 the crazy thing is that we're doing it to ourselves. So that critical, self-critical voice, or some, um, sometimes it's called the pathological self-critic and it's hell-bent on, on being mean to us, to us really. And, and, and on some level, there's an element of we feel that this is, this is going to spur us on or it's, you know, keep us on our toes. Absolutely not. Um, the inner, vo inner critic doesn't do anything to help us excel or fulfil in our goals. It's a very, it's a negative, it's a negative um, inner voice, inner critic, pathological self-critic, whatever you may call it. But, and that's fine, it's just there as part of being a human being. It's just like we need to develop the skill of noticing it and catching it and, and recognising it for what it is. Oh, that's what that is. Oh, okay. okay. So just to notice it. So get good at recognising when your inner critic is on the rampage. So by discerning with what voice, uh, but be discerning with what voice you listen to, because we have another voice. You know, we we have a, a voice for self, kinder, softer self that comes from a place of love and compassion. So we have that ability to be compassionate to ourselves and that, you know, that inner sense of being your own um, best friend, really, your own cheerleader, typically rational and supportive. Our true self is like our internal cheerleader. It sort of, it cheers us on. It wants the best for us and wants us to reach for the, for the stars and to fulfill and to achieve on our, on our dreams and our goals. So that's what the inner critic, the, the true, our true self wants for us. But of course, it's in constant battle with the, uh, the inner critic. But there is that. So, you know, Again, like um, depending on which voice you listen to. So, yes, you notice when the inner critic is there. But also, if you if you look hard and particularly with um, doing some mindfulness practice, you'll be able to also hear that other, that true self. And then be concerned about what voice you pay attention to. So a really good, um, a good little tool for helping us do that is something called RAIN, and this is put forward by uh, Tara Brack. Um, so she talks about recognizing this, just, just the acronym RAIN, recognize, allow, investigate, and nurture, or, or non attachment, we'll come to that in a minute. So recognize first, recognize what's happening. So recognize, oh, I'm not feeling great, or I'm feeling a bit. Uh, annoyed or I'm feeling a bit frustrated or feeling a bit sad or whatever it may be. I'm feeling a bit hard on myself. Don't don't feel, feel a lot of self-doubt or 
whatever that may be. So recognize, recognize it. So it's important to be able to get, develop your own repertoire of knowledge around your own inner thoughts because they're quite repetitive and we tend to have the same, the same flavors of emotions coming up a lot of the time. So recognize it and label, label it. What is this? What is it? And try and discern what actually emotion or what, what's thoughts, thoughts and emotions. Just so recognize your thoughts and your emotions. And often they both fuel each other, obviously. So recognize them, label them, name them, and then allow, allow, or just accept or allow them to be just grant being those particular thoughts, those particular emotions. Just allow them to be because um, that that what you res- that that which you resist persists. So if you try and resist, oh, I don't like feeling this, I'm not going to, I'm just not going to let it in. I'm just not going to You keep pushing it away. Well, actually, it's there. It's big time there. So actually, by stop resisting and just allow yourself to be, to feel all the feelings, to feel the pain, to feel the anger, to feel the sadness, whatever it may be, allow it to be there. And even the thoughts, the negative thoughts that you, you're not very happy with, allow them all, just plant them being, allow them there and invite them in invite them in and just allow them to stop struggling with them and allow them to be there. And then once you've once you've done that, there's an element of a kind of a you know, end in the struggle and maybe more more of peacefulness when you allow them just to be there. And then and recognize them for what they are. So then investigate the eye is for investigating with a gentle, uh, curious attention. So you just okay, so have a look at this and let's have a look at what's what's here. Where is this coming from? What's it about? And often you'll find that it maybe relate to some some uh, negative story you may have on yourself, and which you often run over and over and go like a broken record. So just to rec- investigate where that's coming from, and also investigate where you're feeling it in your body. Like, oh gosh, is it my, is it my shoulders? Is it in my jaw? Is it in my neck? Where you know, where is this? Where where do I feel these feelings? And how is it affecting my body? Okay. And then the fourth thing is nurture. And that's like, this is, relates back to self-compassion. You know, nurture with loving presence. So be that best friend to yourself. What would I do if somebody else was feeling like this? Or if one of my friends was feeling like this? Or some of my family members or whatever? How would I want? How, what would I want for them? What would I want to do for them? And then apply that to yourself. That's the nurturing element. Um, and I also think there's another good, prior to nurture, there was a N meant non-attach. So it's like, you know, non-attach or non-identify with that emotional state or that, that feeling state that you're in. And sometimes, I do think that both of them are really, really used for nurture or non-attach. And sometimes what you need is nurturing. And other, other times you just need to let it go. Maybe say, oh, okay, right, okay, that's just, particularly the more you do this, the better you get at it, you're better at saying, actually, okay, so that's the same old, that's the same old uh, negative self-evaluation over and over again. I'm just going to non-attach, let it go, not not identify with it. That's not who I am. Okay, went through the, went through the steps. Now I recognize and I, I'm willing to let it go, non-attach. Okay. And other other times when, when it's not you're not ready to let it go, it's still there, it's still it, you nurture. It's like what can I do to nurture myself right now? Okay. And the more you get, the better you get at this, and particularly the repetitive kind of negative states, maybe, you actually will will be more inclined to non-attach because you'd have done the nurturing and you'd have you'd have stayed in that space. Um, so then it's important that after the rain, so when you've done that, that we went through that acronym, um, it's important then to, to just recognize and to stay some time in that. And often, it's often quite a nice, peaceful state. It's a, it's a kind of a, a compassionate state. It's a self-compassionate state. Um, and it's a bit like the calm after the storm. But it's important that you actually stay there for a little while and notice how you're feeling while you're in that state um, and uh, recognize that. So that might be a nice, might be peaceful state. It might be kind of gentle. It might be calm. It might whatever. So try and actually, um, I suppose, uh, capitalize on it and 
we try and actually recognize it for what it is and stay with it for a little while because you know whatever you give your attention to actually uh, multiplies so if you give your attention to that calm peaceful more self-loving state and you spend some time within that it builds up and it builds the, it builds the muscle in your brain it builds up it builds a neural path, pathways so that you be be, 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 build your muscle around being compassionate, being calm, being peaceful, being self-loving. Okay, so it's important to spend some time within that. So just to, to end um, on this presentation, it's important to remember we can't practice self-compassion with other people if we can't treat ourselves kindly. And that is, you know, if for any other reason, then you want to be more compassionate. If you want to be more compassionate with other people, you need to start with yourself. So if you can develop your skills around self-compassion, then it makes you much better, much more compassionate person to other people. And I'm thinking particularly if those of you with lots of different responsibilities trying to manage, manage and working from home, trying to manage homeschool and trying to trying to manage a lot of different a lot of different things at the moment. And also to 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 navigate um navigate having maybe a lot of people a lot of people all around at the same time, et cetera, et cetera, and, and not, not at the same, you know, the same personal space. All of that, you, it makes you much more compassionate to other people if you can first start with yourself. So remember to treat yourself as you would a good friend. Okay, so that's um, that's the end of end of this presentation, and I and I hope you've I hope you've enjoyed it, and maybe have some more further along. Okay, thanks for listening.